Hi, my name's Ian and welcome to this Peugeot Partner Micro Camper Build. This is episode two and in this episode you can see what I've been getting up to um, over quite a long period of time. I actually started the strip out process probably about ooh, six or seven weeks ago now um, and then uh, over the last couple of weeks I've managed to spend a little bit more time on it. So what we'll do is uh, jump straight into what I've been up to and then come back to you afterwards. Well, I got a bit of spare time this evening. I thought I might have a go at taking this seat out, and what an absolute sod of a job it's turning into. Fingers crossed. I think I've now got most of the bolts out, so uh, with a bit of luck, it might lift out. And after much faffing about, the seat is now out. Well, I sort of nearly got it there, but uh, yeah, basically, <laughs> that's most of it's out now. Just got a bit more to get out. Well, I've just spent the best part of an hour trying to get these seats apart and then all of a sudden I realised that all I had to do was that. <laughs> and there we have it, the seat is now completely utterly out. So I'll clear up the tools now. Um, these bits here, I'm going to be uh, drilling them out. Let's get rid of those completely. Same with this one here. And then there's also two over the other side as well. They're going to be being taken out as well. Right, today's plan of action is to take out this ramp. So the first thing we need to do is get these pins out of here, which have already released the, uh, the spring on it. So basically that just pulls out and that releases that. Next job is to undo this strut that comes down here. So we need to undo that nut just there. After releasing the bumper, the next thing we have to do is remove that bolt there and then screw that and then by, I'll just loosen the bumper off just to gain enough room just to get the spanner at the back of it. And there we are, the ramp is now fully removed and that is now the view into the van without the ramp. Just got to take the rest of the wheelchair access equipment out as in the seat belts, the winch etc. But, uh, that's where we are at the moment. Next we're going to take out this seat belt section which requires two 17mm spanners. That's that section out. Next we're going to take out this section over here and also going to release the seat belt from out the roof as well. All right, that's all the rear seat belt system out. The only thing I need to do now is get myself a little grey bung, the same as that one there, just to fill up the hole where the seat belt came out the ceiling. With the centre console removed, I've now found the winch system for the wheelchair. Time to try and work out how to get it out now. Well, that's the winch system now out. There's actually a couple of very handy cables. There. There's a positive and negative, which comes from the battery, which may be useful for powering up something at some point. I may actually put an extra cigarette socket in there to power up maybe a compressor fridge or something like that while I'm driving around. But uh, yeah, I'll have to look at that. That's most of the wheelchair access equipment now out. I've just got two more things to remove, which probably means taking the seats out to do that. So yeah, I've got this, this one here to take out and also one over there as well but I think to get them out looking at it it's um, I've put my finger in there and it looks like a giant allen key type of thing I'm going to need to get in there now I'm not quite sure if I've got one or I'm going to have to take the seat out to you know, access it that way with the socket but uh, yeah that's Lena. I've just realised if you push the seat right the way forward you can get to the allen key you can just about make it out down there where my finger is Right, that's the whole wheelchair winch system and restraint system fully out of the vehicle. I will say this down here is absolutely covered in what looks like dog hair. I think there's a dead wasp down there as well, so I need to give that a damn good cleaning out. Uh, and also as well, there seems to be a lot of dog hair down there, so I think whoever had the vehicle before me uh, obviously had a dog. Uh, judging by the amount of uh, white dog hair that seems to be down there. I so just don't look in here, but uh, there's quite a bit of area for potential storage of things. We've got obviously this little flat down under here, there's another one that obviously goes down there. And also as well, under the seat there's quite a deep well down on that side, and also a very deep well down on that side as well, which could be potential areas for putting in the leisure battery and potentially the inverter down there as well, to uh, save on using cupboard space for them. But uh, yes, uh, have to think about that one. So this is the space we now have to play with. One or two more bits to do. Just got to find out what's happening with the wiring on the winch system. And 
maybe take these side panels out to see what's behind those, see if there's any chance of being able to insulate them. Same with the one on the other side there. It's, uh, yeah, there's our blank canvas. To gain more access, I've decided to take these side panels out of the van. Uh, just on the side there because they stick out quite a bit and uh, I think I can gain some more space by taking them out so what I've done is I've taken the one out on the right hand side here now which as you can see there gains me far more space than what we've got there and the whole thing steps back a lot further there is that bit of a bulge you can see sticking out there but I think that's the, um, the locking uh, mechanism for the sliding door so obviously I can't go touching that but uh, I could probably work my way around it with a bit of carpet but uh, yeah so I've got this one out and now I'm going to strip out the one on this side and see what we've got behind it. Well that's the other side now out. I've removed all the seat belt as well from here as well. I just uh, need to find some way of uh, lowering the headlining. I need to pull these clips out from up here but obviously I don't want to break them so I can get that seat belt out from the roof. Let's, uh, let's do that on another day. But, uh, one nice thing as I've just discovered as to why my parking sensors aren't uh, working it's because the wiring was connect disconnected so I think probably when it got converted into a wheelchair access vehicle somebody forgot to uh, plug the module back in but uh, anyway that's uh, one plus point but, uh, yes yeah, but spaghetti junction down here but uh, I think I can get all the wiring pushed back so again like the other side I'll gain a lot more access so uh, probably the plan will be to uh, use some plywood uh, around the panel and uh, then to potentially carpet it, although saying that on this side of the van the um, kitchen is going to be going down there so we might not need to do too much with it but uh, probably still best to, get to plywood it out just to keep any potential heat away from it and any potential water that might get down if anything gets spilt but uh, yeah crack on just been uh, cutting a piece of cardboard just to give myself a rough guide as to where my plywood is going to sit uh, on here. I'm probably going to go for some 9mm ply as a backer on there. So uh, obviously because we've got some lumps and bumps here I've just had to uh, make this cardboard template just to give me an idea where we're going to go. Obviously we've still got the top to cut yet. I'm thinking whether to put the cover strips back in on the rear pillar and on this mid pillar here as well or whether to uh, basically fabricate them uh, out of something else. I mean I think the rear one I could probably get away with just carpeting it obviously infill all the indentations and that uh, and then carpet it but uh, this one here because it's got so many lumps and bumps on it and that I think it might be a bit more difficult to do so I may well put the cover strip back on that was there in the first place but uh, yeah sort of uh, thought I'd have a bit of a play around with a template. The unfortunate thing is I can't use this template on the other side because the shape of the wheel arch, excuse me, light, is completely and utterly different. So I'm going to have to make a separate one for this side. But uh, at least the first one here will be a, give me a rough guide uh, to start off with. After a bit more uh, cutting of cardboard and that, I've now managed to get the side panel to fit more or less where I want it to be. And also I've created a shelf on the top section there as well by using the central pillar section there. As I said earlier on, I may end up just carpeting the M1 because the end section sticks out too far at the bottom because obviously it was designed to take the the, the lower panel that goes with it. So uh, yeah, I definitely think I'm going to end up carpeting that section up there just to finish it off. But uh, yeah, I think that'll work as a template and uh, I'll the plier now. I think it'll look great. Well, that's a basic mock-up now of both sides that's the right hand side uh, I've decided to put the cover strip back in the, in, the, in the back half for a moment I think is the way I'm going to do it rather than trying to mess back carpets in it I will end up probably with a small gap there which I'm going to have to find so I went to fill in when I come to put the uh, after fitted the plywood because I think what I'm going to do with this panel is obviously once I've made it out of plywood is to then carpet it it'll help with a bit of soundproofing I will be putting some soundproofing behind it and possibly some insulation behind these panels as well but uh, obviously just at this stage we're just looking at the mocking up part of things and then flicking around to the other side there 
as I said previously this wheel arch is a bit of a different shape to the other one but uh, more or less got it mocked up around where I need it to go now there was some wiring to play around with around there which again just needs tidying up but again I've got that sort of shelf unit going across the top there and like I said then put the, uh, the cover strip back in on the back end there the idea then is that I will then ply out this side of the run obviously with a bit of bigger bit of plywood than that um, and then carpet that panel so it then joins up with this this one round here once it's all all done but there's a bit of a weird earthing situation going on down here I'm not quite sure yet whether it's a pickable bit <laughs> picked up in the camera or not but uh, there's a yeah there's a great big earth mount on there which I'm not sure whether that was part of the wheelchair access equipment because it looks a bit retrofitted to me or whether that is actually part of the uh, the earthing system of the van so I think we'll leave that where it is just so it doesn't upset anything but uh, yeah that's where we've got to at the moment Just playing around with some offcuts I would have got to see how I'm going to work the floor section on here. I had initially thought about running the floor straight the way across, so basically right the way across here, and then leaving a big storage area underneath it. But um, then when I looked at it the other day and sort of sat in it on a makeup sort of seat, it didn't leave much in the way of um, maneuverability for your legs and that. So what I'm planning on doing now is leaving this lower section of floor in here for your feet to get into and then making some storage on this side and storage on that side right the way through from here so obviously when we pull that down we can access it right the way in from, from here and from over there as well and then run it right the way through up to the back or possibly even making another little pull down section that you can access from from the other side where the seats are it's uh, so just in the thought process at the moment of uh, trying to work out what I'm going to do with it but uh, that's what my thoughts are at the moment. In fact, I've even thought about uh, getting some draw runners on here and actually pull, have some pull out, big pull out drawers, uh, maybe down both sides. Although saying that, I had, I'm still toying with the idea of whether I'm going to go down the route of using the induction hob or whether I'm going to go down the gas route. But if I go gas, I'll need to down this point here somewhere, put a uh, drop out venting uh, from the gas box because I think I'll end up putting a gas locker in the back end here if that's the way I go with it. But uh, as I said, just in the thinking process at the moment. But, uh, let me know what you think. Just taking advantage of the last of the summer evenings that we've got at the moment before winter comes and uh, thought a little bit of work on the van this evening. So, uh, so far I've, uh, I've found a little bit of dodo mat that I had left over from a Peugeot boxer build so uh, stuck that along there, just added a little bit of soundproofing and also found some of the recycled bottle, bottle insulation that I had uh, again from doing the boxer so I'll get down there and just, uh, deciding whether to put my 240 outlet out through this side of the van or whether to do it out the other side of the van which I've got exactly the same aperture on the other side I am toying now with the idea of going on to the driver's side of the van with it rather than this side because potentially if I don't go down the route of an induction hob I'll be having a gas locker probably somewhere around there and having the 240 outlet and the gas locker sort of next to each other uh, I've also got to put the consumer unit, unit in there as well so probably having the uh, 240 hookup coming on the other side and then with the consumer unit underneath the seat area I think is going to be the better way of going with it so uh, I think that's what we're going to do with it. Let's so, say yeah, I've got some insulation in there, all stuffed across, all, all stuffed down, all inside this area down here. Um, I'm going to probably leave this vent, it's like a venting system, down here, uh, which I think I'll probably leave that in in place for now, and not stuff that up with insulation. But uh, yeah, and then uh, let's flip this lamp around. So yeah, on the on this side, so I've got insulation in here now. A dodo mat across there, insulation in there. As I said, what I might do is put the 240 hook up in on this side, I say, because the, the hole on this side is exactly the same as the one on the other side. So I think that's the way I'll go with it. Um, and then I'm just uh, toying with the uh, how I'm going to mount my plywood when I get it. But I think basically I'm going to uh, just mount some timber buttons in various places uh, and then uh, screw the timber button, sorry, the, the plywood. Just to the timber button, so obviously just put me in locate just various locations around uh, little points there just to screw it to. But I think that's where we'll go with it on that. I 
As you can see, I've made a little bit of progress over the, this, uh, the last few weeks, uh, but the plan going forward now is to get some roof rails and crossbars for the van, and, and then also then to get a solar panel to mount onto that, those roof bars, and then obviously then get it to, uh, to get the wire in through the roof, and then obviously to a solar controller. Also, I'm going to probably get myself a leisure battery over the next couple of weeks or so as well, money permitting. And then also then I'm going to get the 240 volts side uh, all connected up, or what? Or not connected up, but obviously fitted. Um, so then I can then start fitting the, uh, the the plywood panels into position. Then, but obviously first thing to, first is to get the uh, the wiring into position first. So yeah, that's the plan going forward. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Got any questions? Please do not hesitate to ask. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Please give us a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, mate.